Good evening, everybody. I hope that it's not going to be a big bother that I'm speaking in English, though I know that ollaan Suomessa, mutta säästäkseen aika, että ei tarvitse tulkata mitään. Se on kaksikielinen maa. Totta kai. Valitettavasti toisista mä en osaa niin paljon hyvin kuin toisista, mutta joka tapauksessa. The situation that we are talking about today is way more complicated and larger to handle or cover within one seminar in a couple of hours, a couple of days or a couple of centuries. I have been asked and I'm greatly thankful for giving me the opportunity to come to present what is the current situation in the, within the Palestinian territories and in particular in Gaza Strip. Uh, as Kalev said, Having different opinion doesn't mean that we don't respect each other. I hope that everybody knows that being different is being strong as well. And I would rather start straight to the thing that I wanted to talk about and then maybe a couple of comments if time gives me or helps me uh, to, to comment upon what our colleague here, Kalev, mentioned. And if it is not a bother to anybody, I hope that uh, nobody will get offended that I will be reading straight from the New Testament. And it's from Luke 10, from 25 till 35, I guess. This is quite small for my eyes, but I try. <laughs> and behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him. Him means Jesus, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? What is your reading of it? So he answered, and he said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have answered rightly, do this and you will live. But he wanting to justify himself said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Then Jesus answered and said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothes, clothing, wounded him and departed him leaving him half dead. Now by chance, at that road, a priest came, a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them. And he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day, when, the, when he departed, meaning the Samaritan, he took out two denarii, gave, it, gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, take care of him and when whatever, uh, uh, whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? Well, Palestinian nation pretty much is like this man who was coming down from Jerusalem to, the, to, the, to Jericho. And I have no intention pointing fingers at any sides, but talking about the pure suffering of the population there. Considering the situation in Gaza, through the history of, and we are talking about the history from 19, uh, 48 till now. After the establishment of the State of Israel, there wasn't much of so-called uh, happy days, happy mood going on. 
Yet, everybody knows, especially Palestinians, those who have lived within the Gaza Strip, that there was at least two decades of really stable time, and it was under Israeli control from around 70s till late 80s. Palestinians from Gaza Strip could go to work in Israeli side. They could travel freely. I remember myself when we were spending one summer vacation in Gaza Strip was just about before the first intifada started in 1987. If I remember correctly, it was just the beginning of that year. We were spending some vacation in the Gaza Strip and I remember very clearly that we woke up quite early in the morning. My, God, uh, <clears throat> my grandfather uh, hired a taxi and we drove right away to Jerusalem and then up to Sea of Galilee and then down to uh, Jericho and then to Tel Aviv and then to Beersheba and we were going around like anybody else. Nobody even asked for our IDs or permissions or why you are here, why you are out of Gaza or whatever. But because of unwillingness among quite many people in Palestinian sites and even some in the Israeli sites that they couldn't just let things settle down peacefully, we ended up to the situation that we have today. Palestinians nowadays within Gaza Strip are considered to be, and I'm now emphasizing this word, considered to be on the largest jail all over the globe. Well, some, might, some, may, some people might believe so, but on the other hand, is it true that this jail is a jail? And who made it a jail? Partially because of the long-lasting armed conflict going on between the two sides. Everybody knows that when we are in conflict zone, especially talking about armed conflict zone, a lot of measures have been taken. Some of them are not pleasant at all. And we don't need to go beyond borders to think about it. I would rather bring it up to us in Finland. I'm not a Finn. I'm a new Finn, and I'm really proud to be a new Finn. And I have, I have read a lot of Finnish history, and nobody could tell me that in Finland, neighbors didn't shoot each other behind the sauna just for belonging to the wrong political party. And it wasn't so many years ago. Nobody could say to me that within the same family, sons and daughters have been disowned for belonging to the long, wrong side of the political sphere in the late or early 20th century. Yet, Finland was the first country within the European con con continental to give the right for women to vote. While I'm bringing these two examples, <coughs> Palestinians themselves have caused a lot of troubles for themselves. Partly for choosing wrong leaders. Partly for distrusting somebody that we call them cousins, but yet they are enemies. And when I say about cousins, or when we talk about cousins in Gaza, we mean the Israelis, the Jew exactly the Jewish people. For Arabs, even Yasser Arafat, sometimes when he has his cool mood, he would refer to the Israelis and the Jews, the cousins. So back to the point that what is right now going on within the Palestinian territories of Gaza? Palestinians have been misled have been misused, have been dishonored, and at maximum, they have been denied their own basic right of, have, of having their own opinion. About the funding and all this fund that has been bored and why it's happening and all this, we can debate about it so many years if we wish, but Unfortunately, as Caleb said, these political deals, and I like it more in Finnish, Lehman Kaupat, <laughs> has been one big major problem for the Palestinians. Nobody can deny that without the pure pressure and influence of the United States, 
And some European countries, Yasser Arafat would have never accepted to sit down and negotiate peace agreement that led to Oslo Accords. Those leaders made him understand that if he would approve this Oslo Accords, he would end up being a rich, and this is what exactly happened. Nobody can say that it's only Israeli army, Tzahal, causing all this trouble in the Palestinian territories. No, Hamas has been causing a lot. But yet, and this is the critical issue that we can freely disagree about, we all agree that every human being have the right to have own political opinion. So if it happens that you are a Muslim, and if it happens that you like to let your beard grow, and if it happens that you like to dress up like an Arab, and then you have a political opinion that might not be pro-Israelis, does that make you a terrorist or anti-Semitist? And this is the issue that quite often in the Western societies get easily confused about. Because myself, I have no whatever so-called hatred or anti-Semitism at all. Downtown where I live in Uvascula, my best friends are Jewish. They trust me with their kids more than they trust their fellow Israelis. And not because I'm good or anything, but because they know who I am. And this is the thing that we often forget about the whole situation there. When we talk about people or nation or governments, we get things mixed up. And that's why we need to have more of bright, hopeful cases to, to be talking about. Like this situation that somebody ends in jail just for saying a joke about X or Z leader within the government. I want just to sum up and end by saying that it is not me or you or what do you do or what do you think about Israelis or Palestinians. It's what kind of principle you are standing behind and for. Do you have the courage to carry out all the needed, and I emphasize peaceful effort, to bring two struggling partners to sit down and negotiate, to talk, not to gain economical or political winning. This is what I hope that as, as Finland is well known for being neutral and not trying to influence any side to do Lehman Kaubat again, what could we do here? And instead of just showing hate to the other side and blindly loving the other side, it's okay to love, but why to hate? And this is one big major issue that even within the Palestinian territories we are suffering from. Because I am a Christian, I'm not loved by the Muslims. And we're all Palestinians, we're all Arabs. Because I don't want to approve that using violent techniques against the Israelis, we are going to solve any problem, I'm in bad shape. Because I have said that Quran and Muhammad, with all respect, have said things that I don't agree upon. I end up in the blacklist in quite many countries. I hope that <clears throat> one day, like brothers, with their cousins, with their neighbors, we could sit all around the same table and talk about, hey, how was your day? How was your kids? And instead of how much you will give me to be silent and not to do trouble for you, or how much can we use these Europeans or Americans so we can support some tiny interest here or there. Thank you so much for listening.